When you see a bobsleigh hurtling down the track at the Olympics or any other major event, it's easy to see the fluidity and the majesty with which a sled descends the track. But how big are those corners really? Because they don't look that big on the TV. Well, my name's Axel Brown, I'm an Olympic bobsledder and I'm here to take you through it. So let's waste no time, let's get straight into it, let's go. As an Olympic bobsleigh pilot, I'm here to basically run you through what a track is, what it's made of, and how big they really are, because it's hard to get an idea for that when you watch it on your TVs, at home, how big really are the corners, how big are the sleds, how big are the people? So there's two ways of looking at the track. There's the length of the track and there's the height of the corners themselves. The length is an easier one because generally, each run down a bobsleigh track is around about a minute long. You don't want to be too much longer, you don't want to be too much shorter, because that's just kind of a good length for keeping people's interest when watching it at home. Much longer, it gets a bit repetitive, and it's harder on the athletes, much shorter, and it's over too fast. So a minute is what most track designers will aim for. And given the speed of the sleds, you know then roughly how long they are. And the answer to that is around about a mile long. So your shorter tracks will be about 1200 meters and your longer tracks right up to 1700 meters. The longest one in the world being the brand new track that was introduced for the Beijing 2022 Olympics where I raced back in February. Now that's not the fastest track, the fastest track is Whistler and that's because in Whistler you've got this huge vertical drop which you don't have in Beijing. So it's not all about the length of the track, it's sometimes just about the steepness of the hill. The other factor to look at is how big the corners are. Now this varies hugely. It varies within the track, but it also varies from track to track. So generally, a track will be made up of anywhere between 12 and 20 corners. And those corners have varying heights, varying levels, varying difficulties and they all serve different purposes. So you've got one corner called a Kreisel. That's a full 360 degree loop, or in the case of Beijing, it's even further than 360 degrees. Now those are actually designed to slow the sleds down. You imagine if you're doing a full loop, the sled can rise, the sled can drop uh, quite a lot. You have some big corners, like the Kreisel in Koenigsee is much bigger, for example, than the Kreisel in Altenburg. And those are just design traits of the track themselves. As you can imagine, a thinner corner forces the sleds into this small berth, meaning it's harder for them to be somewhere else compared to a different sled, which often leads to not a huge variation in how the, tra how the sleds take that corner and therefore how fast they go. But some of the bigger corners, like the final two corners in Winterberg, corner 10 at Lake Placid, they can be as much as three meters tall sometimes even a little bit bigger. In fact, in Whistler, the, the site of the Vancouver 2010 Olympics, the corners were too big and they've had to bring them down. You can see it when you walk the track, they've had to bring them down about a foot to make the track more safe because sleds were getting so high that it was making it really hard for them to come off. And one corner was called 50-50 because famously, Steve Holcomb said that you had a 50-50 chance of making it down without crashing. Now I'm quite a tall guy. I'm six foot five, just shy of two meters tall a meter 95 and if I stand in the corner as you can see here now you imagine when you're then hurtling down this track at nearly a hundred miles an hour and you're right up on that corner that's quite a feeling because you are almost fully inverted some corners you do go past that 90 degree mark and you're actually upside down ever so slightly which is insane to think about as I sit here in my office now but it's the truth that actually sometimes those sleds go upside down and I'm driving it but anyway the third factor in terms of the size of the tracks is how long the corners are. And again, you, it stands to reason that if you've got a full 360 degree turn, that's gonna be a lot longer than you know, a little 45 degree turn. But the way these tracks are constructed is so that you've got these varying different lengths, heights, speeds of the corners to increase the skill needed to get down it safely. But another cool aspect of the Beijing track was how the corners seem to stretch on much longer than other corners. So you have corner 13, for example, 
which has this extra trail off at the end. Normally a corner gets fatter and then thinner again, and you've got this kind of wave that the sled naturally takes, but corner 13 goes fat and then thin and then stays thin for a lot longer. So in my head, I saw that as almost two separate corners. But these corners, like I said, there's maybe 16 of them in a mile long track. So you can imagine that some of these corners and their corresponding straights afterwards can be up to 100 meters long. So think about that next time you're watching the bobsleigh on the TV, whether that's in the Olympics or otherwise, that actually all of those corners that take a second or two to get down can be 100, sometimes two, three, 400 meters long in the case of a really long chrysal. So yes, a sled may look small in those corners, but they're not. They're fitting 200 kilogram, six foot plus athletes in, sometimes four in the case of the four man, and that thing's hurtling along. So when it looks small on, on the track, that's not because the athletes are small, it's not because the sleds are small, it's because the tracks themselves are absolutely huge. Anyway, I hope that gives you a bit more context of what we're doing when we're driving a bobsleigh. If you wanna see any more information about bobsleigh, hit the channel down below, hit subscribe while you're at it, it means a lot. Regardless, thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.